We're here for the launch of a very special book tonight, all about uh, the history of uh, the best Irish musicians. It's called Irish Folk Tradition and Blues, A Secret History, and uh, one of the authors joins me now, Trevor Hodgett. Hello. Hi, Robin. How are you? I'm very well. So, you're all excited about the launch of this book? It's very exciting because in that book, we're really celebrating some musicians who have meant a lot to myself and my co-author, Colin Harper. Mm -hmm. These are people who we'd regard as the trailblazers and the pathfinders and the pioneers of Irish music, and very often people who haven't had the credit they deserve. Yeah. People like Otley Patterson and Jim Armstrong and Jim Daly and Sweeney's Men and Eric Bell and so on, as well as more celebrated performers like Rory Gallagher and Gary Moore. The careers of these guys are like real sagas. They've had all sorts of adventures and misadventures and they've been ripped off and they've been used and abused and the, the hardships some of these guys have suffered. I think it makes an interesting tale. So I think even people who aren't specialists will enjoy that aspect of it, the fact that these guys have tales to tell. Time now to meet the other guy behind the book, this time Colin Harper. Hello. Hello Robin. How's it going? It's going very well. How's it going with you? Fine, fine. Good. So you're excited about the launch of this book then? Well, slightly baffled and amused, but it all seems to be happening here, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Um, but no, it's good to uh, it's good to get the thing out, you know, because um, the, the business of writing books, I don't know if the man on the street appreciates this, but quite often an author will finish work on a book a year or more ahead of it appearing in the shops, yeah. and uh, th that's been the case with this. Um, but I mean, now that it's here, it, it seems to be fulfilling a need. It seems to be, you know, plugging a gap. I'm quite proud to uh, have an 11,000 word feature on a band called Sweeney's Men in there, right. featuring uh, people like Andy Irvine and Terry Woods and Johnny Moynihan. These kind of eccentric, slightly shambolic, but hugely influential people uh, who made just two albums and a couple of singles in the late 60s. And, but I mean, what the work that they did really laid the foundations for the Irish folk revival of the 70s, the, the big name acts like Planksty and so on that came through uh, after them, and, and in, in fact, which contained a couple of people from Sweeney's Men. So doing that, I felt, was quite important. That's the first chapter in the book. Um, and it was great fun to meet uh, Bruce Shields uh, yeah. as well. I tracked him down specifically for the book. Right. And I'm delighted to say that he's performing at the Guinness Spot tonight, doing a set of blues. Listen to the blue bird. Crying in the air, he's just there. Sam's gone. Sam's gone. Looking at the whip of will, who's always known to spare. Sham new cheers. Sam's gone. Sam's gone. Some people say. Big gig in the Guinness spot tonight. The legends are calling this show, aren't they? Well, I'm calling it This Is Where the Obsolete Me, which is a slightly different. <laughs> <laughs> a legend is, is a guy who's alive a lot longer than he should be. Right, you yeah. Know? But unfortunately, we've lived this land, which takes the crack over for a lot of people. So, it's, it's, you know, it's nice we're here, and it's, it's lovely to see Henry again. I met Henry in 1967, and I remember distinctly in Grand Street, he was wearing an Afghan coat. Right. And I told him that. I said, I don't remember that. I said, I know, but you were wearing the Afghan coat. <laughs> so <laughs> I met Jackie around 68. He used to wear a band down the south called The Cult. Right. I remember so. The, and it's nice to be, I've, I met the boys periodically between this and that. It's great to be here with them tonight. You know. band that you're best known for is of course Skid Row, not to be confused with the 80s kind of permed rockers, isn't that correct? They call them poodle bands. <laughs> <laughs> Chee Willis, but the tall guys. But they weren't bad, you know. And I, th th there was a joke that came around after, as you know, the boys had to sign a contact with John Bon Jovi and the other lad, whatever his name is, that plays the guitar, that they couldn't say anything right. when they fell ill, uh -huh. you know, whatever it was. But there was a joke going around that those guys, that American Skid Row was going to sue me because I let them use the name. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm on the Texas-Mexican border, people don't know who I am. So I go into the canteen and we all go together. They say, hey amigo, where are you from? I say, hey amigo, we're from Ireland. And they say, hey amigo, can you do the river dance? Hey amigo, I never wore a pair of trousers in my life. You discovered not only Gary Moore but Phil Linnett as well, That's didn't right, you? Yeah. How did you meet the two of them in the first place? Well, 
somebody told me there was a great guitar player playing down in that place called the Gogo in Dublin. And he was standing in with a band called The Few from Belfast, a blues band. So I went down to hear him mm -hmm. and I thought, man, this guy's great. And uh, at this time, Philo was just started singing with me. Philo was 17, I discovered him with a band called The Black Eagles. Right. So I got on the bus and I went across. There. Everybody got on the bus then went over and knocked at his door and offered him a job. So he was with me for about two months when, when, we, when I seen Gary, then I offered Gary a job. And the rest is geography, really, you know. Mm -hmm. The rest was, couldn't fail. So anyway, after a little while, Philo, he had a kind of a tonsil problem, you know. Right. So I decided that I could sing a lot better than him. So even though he was my best pal, I mean, people say to me, how good a friend of yours was Phil in it? This is true. He came on me honeymoon with me. <laughs> Philo, myself and the missus. <laughs> to Manchester, this is common knowledge. I can't tell you what went on, but it wasn't that, you know. What I mean? but <laughs> even so, in those days, like, you, you'd be totally rootless. Yeah. And I just decided like I could do a better job. Right. So I let him go and he was my best pal. <laughs> As you know, John Peel died just mm -hmm. lately. And there's a guy in Hooks Records in England, along with Colin Harper here, yeah. who wants to bring out a Skid Row album made up of two John Peel sessions, two live mm -hmm. sessions. Mm -hmm. But we were so wild, we started one session with a 13 minute drum solo. <laughs> <laughs> so I think there's four tracks on the air. So they're trying to get this out, so I should go ahead. No bridges to go ahead. So it's up to Gary if he wants to go ahead. Yeah. People like Frank Zappa and, and living a sex and drugs and rock and roll lifestyle. Um, and many of those musicians who played in them went on to have very good careers like John Wilson played with Taste with Rory Gallagher and still plays around Belfast to this day. Uh, Jim Armstrong who I mentioned still plays to this day. Kenny McDowell, uh, Jackie McCauley went on to play with the Belfast Gypsies on Trader Horn. Jackie was Lonnie Donegan's musical director for years. Jackie wrote a hit record, Dear John, for Status Quo and still plays. He's playing the Guinness spot tonight to launch the book. Your love flies in my heart Your love flies in my heart If this whole world should fall apart Your love flies in my heart Take you down on a boat to China. We'll go dancing in the Mardi Gras. We'll ride our horses in the Kalahari Desert. And throw our pennies in the Panama Canal. We'll throw our pennies in the Panama Canal. Trevor, over the years as well, you've interviewed many of the, the big stars and things. Who's been the ones that stand out? Who's been the favourite one? Well, I suppose the, the theory would be people for whom you have a real passion. So indeed, a lot of the people in that book, you know, I've interviewed Henry McCulloch many times. And, uh, you know, that's always a pleasure. He's not the most famous person I've interviewed, but that's always very satisfying. Yeah. And so all of those guys, it's given me pleasure to interview because they've given me so much pleasure over the years. Yeah. And, it's, you know, I'm, I'm really thrilled to be able to give some kind of credit to them in this book. All right, so you're promoting the book at the minute. Uh, once all the promotion stuff's over, will there be another book? Are you working on any other projects? Well, I'm working on a... Uh, actually, in, in two or three weeks, uh, there'll be a charity album uh, appearing called The Wildlife Album, nice. which, uh, which features a few people that are in this book. Um, and, and several that aren't, and it's uh, going to be an album, the profits of which will go to the Elster Wildlife Trust and the WWF, and that's an album that will feature Cara Dillon, Roy Harper, Colin Reed, Bert Jansch, uh, Fairport Convention, uh, you know, various people from that era. Um, so, uh, yep, www.thewildlifealbum.com. Brilliant. Check it out. What a plug. <laughs> good luck with the book and good luck with the CD as well, Colin. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
finally, any books uh, we should be looking out for? Any new new releases? Oh Lord, uh, so many, yeah. so many new books. Rich Hall's new book, um, I Blame Society. It 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 it, it's a fantastic collection uh, of 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 well pseudo autobiographical as he's, he's he's writing it under the the, the his alter ego yeah. but what, what's surprising with rich's book is that even though it's it, it he, he is a comic genius it is a, a satire and a parody of of, of contemporary america mm -hmm. and a particular part and i was telling him that I, I found it actually quite sad and he smiled and said that's good you know because yeah. it's it's meant to be um, and of course the new book by Colin and Trevor of course, yeah. and um, there's some new crime fiction out at the moment Ian Rankin's new book Flesh Market Close has been selling very very well and um, just lots of, of, of good mystery and, and detective fiction out there too Okay so David just give us uh, some details of how people can get in contact is there a website available? There is and it's, it's thankfully it's, I got in early enough it's a simple one it's www.noalibis.com Alright and what about phone numbers? Uh, Belfast 02890 or 319607 and we're on 83 Botanic Avenue and at the University of Ulster in Jordanstown. I don't go to church I smoke and I drink and I lie and I curse You never got to me for your sermon and all When you talk, you talk about nothing at all I'm a failed Christian Two recollections Taking the collection and tears when the choir sang in harmony. It scared me half to death. I swore as I left an inside pocket full of change and memories of my failed Christian. I'm a failed Christian. I got my own church. I swear in my soul to this great universe All over the world The blood's on her hands Religious instruction I can't understand I'm a failed Christian I'm a failed Christian